Well, hello again, everyone, and welcome back to the second installment of these short video presentations introducing some of the readings that we'll be doing for the remainder of the semester. As I mentioned before, part of the idea is just to attempt to maintain some human connection in the course as we've begun the remote portion of our time together. Um, the readings that we're going to be doing for this week, actually they sort of straddle two of the, the key topics that we're discussing in the course. The first reading belongs to the, the same general topic as the readings for last week, the self and nature, and the second reading by Paul Tillich leads us into the final section of the course on the self and the sacred. So I wanted to start talking about the first reading, which is by Amanda Heiner, called Critical Thinking and the Techno Brain. Um, this piece is a very interesting piece. It also has the distinction of being the only piece that we've read in the course this semester written by a Winthrop professor. Amanda Heiner is a professor in the Department of English. She's a specialist in the, in the question of critical thinking and especially in the question of, of how it is that technology, handheld technology, social media, Google, these sorts of things have impacted our ability to think critically. So that's the frame that you should sort of take as you are, as you're uh, approaching this piece. A couple of things I want you to be aware of. First of all, you'll notice that, that Dr. Heiner begins by invoking the allegory of the cave. So I assume you remember the basic lineaments of the allegory of the cave, the basic structure of the narrative that Socrates gives in that text. But if you don't, it may be useful to familiarize yourself with it before you jump into the Heiner piece. The second thing I want you to keep in mind is that um, many students, in my experience at least, and I think me, me, me as well, because I sort of belong to a, a generation that was in some sense raised on handheld social media technology, we tend to have a, a sort of reflexively negative response to the argument that Heiner makes, uh, in much the same way that we sometimes have a reflexively negative response to the arguments that Swim makes about the power of advertising. There's nothing wrong with that reaction. In fact, it's, it's important, as in any piece, to subject Heine's arguments to searching critique, but I also want us to be aware of certain blocks that we might have going into the piece, and at least at the beginning, to be willing to sort of put our guard down just for a moment, to hear the argument, to hear the evidence, and to give it serious consideration before coming round at the end to offer our criticism. This is just a good general critical reading strategy. First, one has to understand the material, and then one proceeds to a critique or a critical engagement with that material. So keep that in mind as you are reading Heiner's piece. The second piece by Paul Tillich is called What Faith Is. And with this piece, we transition into the final section of our course for the semester. This is the, the section called The Self and the Sacred. So I'd like you to do some sort of background thinking, not so much background research, but background thinking before you get into this piece. And I want you to spend some time thinking not so much about the Tillich piece or about Tillich or about faith, but about the, the general topic under which this piece is located. And that's the topic of the sacred. So think about the concept of the sacred, what it is that the sacred connotes, in what context, what places are we likely to hear the word sacred? Most of us will perhaps be most familiar with the idea of sacredness within a religious context. What we're going to find in Tillich is that he wants to sort of take the idea of the sacred in a religious context and give it a somewhat broader connotation. He wants to expand its meaning in ways that I'll discuss very briefly in just a moment. But before you sort of think about it in that broader Tillichian, there's the adjective associated with Tillich, that broader Tillichian context, just think about the way that the, the word sacred works in our society. If you were to use the word or hear the word, where would you expect to use it or hear it? Now for the piece itself, the title is important. It's called What Faith Is. And Tillich doesn't beat around the bush. He comes out and tells us in the first paragraph what faith is or what he thinks faith is, at least. He gives a kind of definition of it right from the beginning. Um, as you're thinking about the piece, as you're thinking about Tillich's definition of faith, keep a couple of things in mind. First of all, Tillich is um, a Christian philosopher and theologian, but he is manifestly, as I think will become clear as you're reading the piece, not writing for a specifically, a much less an exclusively Christian audience in this particular piece. This leads to the second point. 
what Tillich is trying to do in what faith is, is to, is to, to some degree, to some extent, give it a definition of faith, an account of faith that will appeal to us as human beings and not simply as religious folks or certainly not simply as Christians. So although he is himself Christian, he's writing in that tradition, he's working in that tradition, he's trying to think of faith in a broad sense that would apply just as much to um, uh, a Roman Catholic saint as to an atheist like Richard Dawkins. He's trying to give us a global account of faith, a universal account of faith, that sort of taps into the structures of human desire and human longing and human knowledge. And it is not limited by particular religious manifestations of faith. Okay, so keep that in mind. I should also point out that um, Tillich is not an especially clear or lucid writer. So as you're reading the piece, be prepared for some sort of jumbled language, some sentences where you will read the sentence two or three times and think, I just don't know what it is that Tillich is talking about. That's perfectly understandable. He's writing in a tradition where this kind of um, obscurity is par for the course and he participates in it for better or worse. That said, you should still nonetheless be able to grasp the general concepts that Tillich is working with in this piece. And that'll be, that'll be the really crucial bit. Okay, so just a couple of things to keep in mind as you are reading the pieces for next week and then preparing to do the discussion posts for next week. Very well. Um, in the meantime, if you have any questions at all, please feel free to let me know. I should say I was very impressed by your work on the discussion posts last week, and I, I expect that the good work will continue. Very well. As always, any questions, let me know. That'll do it for now. Have a good afternoon.